All right, so the first part is formation of rocks. The first part of the song said, igneous rocks are formed from fire, you see, something like that. So the word igneous, remember that I told you that rocks are classified based on their formation. So for, in order for you to understand where each rock would fall or where each rock type would be, you have to understand the formation of it. So once you know how the rock is formed, then you will understand everything else. So igneous rock, this word igneous is from the Greek word, which mean, which is ignis. Does it sound like something to you? Ignis, ign. Ignite. Ignite, beautiful. So ignite is like a spark, a fire. Right? So if we are igniting something and there's a fire involved, we know that in our land and natural systems and relating to the earth and formation of things, the only natural fire that we have is what? So it is from volcano, volcanic activity, magma or lava, right? So this rock, just from the name alone, igneous rock shows us that this particular rock was formed by fire. So in a way, this is our first type of rock. So it is formed by fire and then the other things would happen as a result of it, but we're coming to that. So the igneous rocks, these are formed when molten rock from deep within the earth's crust finds its way into or onto the earth's crust where it cools and hardens. So where this word is concerned, when we have the molten material that is under the earth's crust, it is called magma. But once it comes above the earth's crust, lava. So lava is above the earth's crust. The only difference between the two of them is their location. The chemical composition doesn't change, nothing about it changes except their location. So volcanologists want to be able to differentiate between where the molten material is. So the one that is below the earth's crust is called magma and the one that is above the earth's crust is called lava. So when we are getting the igneous rocks that are going to be formed, it can be formed by magma or it can be formed by lava. So all that happens, remember it's molten material. What does molten mean? So molten, just like the word suggests, means that it is melted. Melted things cannot be rocks. So that means this particular rock, this particular rock forms after this molten material has cooled. So igneous rock formed from molten material that has cooled and hardened. So it cools below the earth's crust. Sometimes if it is cooling below the earth's crust, we call it intrusive igneous rocks. The first part of the word intrusive, what does in mean? What does that prefix mean? Eh, inside. Thank you. So that means this particular type of rock, the intrusive igneous rock, it is cooled and hardened inside the earth's crust, okay? And then if it has cooled and hardened outside of the earth's crust, can... so just to recap igneous rocks, igneous, the prefix there is ignis, which means fire. So we know that that rock is formed from fire, molten material that has cooled and hardened. If it cools and hardens underneath the earth's surface, we call it intrusive igneous rocks. But if it cools and hardens outside of the earth's surface, we call it extrusive igneous rocks. But either way, it is igneous rocks because it is formed by fire. So the next one is sedimentary. So look at this word again. Sedimentary, what's the root word? Let's bring over a little English language. What's the root word here in sedimentary? Sediments. 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 Very good. 
And when you think of sediment, what comes to your mind? Sediment. Sediment is talking about small particles, little things. Very small particles that are just laying around, basically. So these sediments would be what would form your sedimentary rocks. So what happens with the sediments is that these sediments, these tiny things that are all over, they are compacted together. They're pushed together because they're constantly being pressed by something, they harden. And that's how we get that particular rock. So that is also why they would have been formed in layers. So let's think about it for a second. Um, we have a lot of sediments right here, just some little things. Yeah, and then we have naturally water is going to be around, water is going to be added. So these types of rocks are usually found near water sources. So um, rivers, inside the sea, anywhere there is constant body of water, you can find sedimentary rocks being formed there. So where we have these sediments, for example, think of, think of some... What should I say now? Sugar. Sugar that you have left in a cup. So it's not dissolving, but some sugar that you have left in a cup. Where does the sugar go? It sinks to the bottom of the cup. Yes, good. And if we leave it there for long, sometimes you put on your teacup and you left some sugar in the bottom. I know some parents cuss about it that you are used too much sugar. Um, you left some sugar in the bottom. If you leave it long enough, what happens? Dries up. Good. It hardens. It sticks together. So it's a similar situation here. You have some sediments that are loose. These sediments are now in water, rivers, or the ocean. And because of the constant presence of water, these sediments become compacted over time. Compacted means like they get pressed down together. Right? So these sediments become compacted over time so that it hardens into a rock. Why we get it as layers now? So this first set of sediments that we have here would have given us like our first layer. And then we get a different set of sediments after, it would have given us our second layer that is on top of this. So that is why these rocks are usually formed in layers. All right, I have a question for you. Where would these sediments come from? So we are back in time. We don't have nothing much. Where do the sediments come from? I'm trying to let you link this to the rock cycle at the same time. So the first rock that we looked at, or first rock, which is born out of fire, would have been the igneous. So when the igneous rock gets eroded now, you would have some sediments that are left behind. These sediments, these same sediments from that igneous rock, once they are near water sources and they have something to hold it down, then they would start compacting. That is how we end up with our layers of rocks, which would have given us sedimentary. So sedimentary rocks formed when materials have been deposited by agents such as river. It is compacted over time, hardens into a rock. Um, this happens near water sources. The material is deposited in layers, and these layers are often clearly visible in the, in the rock. So you can actually see the different layers that are inside the rock. Examples are in limestone and in sandstone. So then we move on to metamorphic. How many persons watch Power Rangers? When they're about to change from their regular human clothes into those pink and yellow and white suit. What do they say? They say it is morphing time. Good. So morph, see the word here, M-O-R-P-H. Just like how when Power Rangers, they're going to change into something else, they say it's morphing time. It means that it is changing time. Change is going to take place. So similarly, where metamorphic is concerned, this means that there's a change in the composition of the rock. 
change in the structure of the rock, change in how the rock set up. Yeah, so we have igneous rocks already. We have sedimentary rocks already, already. So these now, when they go under certain conditions, they change. Just like people, people will tell you sometimes that they've been through some stuff so that they, they come out different. You ever hear anybody say that before? So people change after they go through things. Similarly, rocks change after they go through things. So the things that rocks would go through in order to change is intense pressure and heat. So if it is constantly being pressed or if the heat is going to melt it over again, because remember that's where it come from in the first place. And if this is happening over a long period of time, then their structure and their mineral composition will change. So once this change takes place, what we get is now a different type of rock. So it's like we're sending in an igneous rock and it goes through the pressure and the heat changes. So when it comes out, we get another rock that is no longer igneous, but it is now a metamorphic rock. So those are our three rock types. So for the rock cycle now, when we say cycle, what do we mean by that? That means our rocks that we just spoke about, those rocks will consistently be changing and reproducing and it's a cycle that just keeps going on. So the first rock type that we have, we're gonna create the rock cycle together, right? So the first rock type that we have would have been what? Igneous. Igneous rock, very good. So that is my first rock type, which is igneous rock. So when I have my igneous rock now, how is my igneous rock formed? By fire. All right, by fire or when magma melts. Very good. So in order to get my igneous rock, I would have had, let me just use a different color. I would have had, um, let me say molten material or lava in bracket, yeah? So when I have my igneous rock now, this igneous rock is, other things are gonna happen. The process of erosion may happen. When the process of erosion takes place, what do I get from that? Sed um, sedimentary rock. Do I just get the sedimentary rock right away or something else comes from the erosion? Sediment. Sediment. Oh, All right. So the igneous rock will go to, through the process of erosion and then I will end up with um, sediments. I'll end up with sediments. Okay, so my sediments now, what will happen to my sediments? What will they go through? It's a C word. All right, we'll soon come to that. What will they form? What will my sediments now form? My sediments will now give me my sedimentary rock. So my sediments would now give me my sedimentary rock. I'm gonna write in the processes shortly. So my sedimentary rock now may go through heat and pressure changes. So I will write heat and pressure changes here. And from this heat and pressure changes, what will I get? Metamorphic. Metamorphic rocks. So we get metamorphic rocks from the heat and pressure changes. And then 
metamorphic rocks will also go through melting again. And then all of our melting will give us igneous rock and that is our cycle. But we can get metamorphic rock from another type of rock. Not true. It doesn't have to be sedimentary, which is coming from right now. Where else can we get the metamorphic rock from? Igneous. So the igneous rock can also go through heat and pressure changes here. So just the same. And then it would also give us the metamorphic rock. It's not igneous rock alone that can give us sediments. What else can give us sediments through the process of erosion? Metamorphic rock. So the metamorphic rock can also give me sediments. We do have the general cycle, which goes around in a circle. But even within the cycle, we can have different things that would interact with each other. So the metamorphic, um, the metamorphic rock can go through changes as well, where it also gets sediments. So what would happen with the metamorphic rock would be the process of weathering and erosion. We're going to talk about weathering later. Weathering and erosion. That would cause that. Also, with igneous to sediments, it would have been weathering and erosion as well. From sediments to sedimentary rock, the process is compaction. See the word compact? What does compact mean? Things come together and form up. Good. So you see, even if you go in the exam and like some of the things slip you, you can just use clues to remember them. Like the words itself, you can use those things to remember them. Okay, and even if you don't remember the specific word, you don't remember compaction, you can still explain yourself to say when the sediments come together and they're forced to stay in one space. So it would have been easier for you that way. All right, so it's compaction and cementation. So that would have been the name of the process that takes place there. And then between sedimentary and metamorphic rock, where you have the heat and pressure changes, we call that metamorphosis. And then the metamorphic going to melt it, to molten, that would be melting taking place there. And then when we have the molten material now that is going to cool and harden, going to igneous rock. crystallization. Okay, so there is a question. This question is for everybody. So we have gone through the rock formation and we have also looked at the rock cycle. So from the syllabus, those are the only things that would involve rocks. So if they are asking you something about rocks on your exam, it is going to come somewhere from these two things, okay? So the next section would have been weathering.